has happened to the Mavs in the last week? To which I think sarcastically, they're fine. Corey said they're fine, and Mike responded, "No, they're not." <laughs> but seriously, mm-hmm. it. I, and I know the answer is probably going to be a variety of things. Yeah. I personally would like to kind of spotlight their defense. You could look at the fact that Kyrie was cold in the Boston game. THJ was cold in the Philly game. Turnovers were the difference in the game yesterday. Three-point shooting was probably the difference in the Celtics game. And you actually did a shockingly good job of rebounding over the weekend. So it, it's it's probably a lot of things. But I wanted to take the whole week because that's the span you've lost four of five. What has happened to this team in that run? One, they're not playing with the same energy that they played with around the trade deadline. And I get the schedule has been tougher. They went on an East Coast trip. They couldn't beat any of the teams that were as good or better than them. Because like Cleveland, I know you had somebody text in, Corey, Cleveland's a really good team. They're arguably better than the Dallas Mavericks. They're definitely as good. Uh, And you, unfortunately, that was a 60-foot shot that went in yeah. probably one out of a hundred times that shot is going to go don't in. mess around in the last right because you're up 110 to 100 yeah. uh kind of like look philadelphia had to put out a team out there that probably wouldn't make the playoffs maybe make the play-in situation but that's what they have right now because of joel Embiid's injury and they were able to hold on to their 10 point lead with four minutes to go the mavericks couldn't do that in cleveland it seems like to me there's quite a few things going wrong I don't want to just point at one. It's not just one thing, but it looks like Jason Kidd is lost on who he has on this team. He has no clue how to use this team. And that's concerning to me because Luca has been playing at a high level throughout this time. It's not like, well, hey, man, you go as your superstar goes. I totally get that. That's why Philadelphia is struggling because Joel Embiid isn't playing. Or if your superstar struggles, it's going to be tough to win that game. But I'm looking at these five games. Luca in these games, his worst shooting game was 10 of 21 at Indiana, where you got blown out. All his other games, three out of the other four, he's over 50%, easily over. He's getting you 35 points about per game. He's getting you 11 rebounds. He's getting you 12 assists. His turnovers, yesterday they were high. Like he had too many turnovers yesterday. But he's playing at a high level. So I agree with Corey. He screws around. I was the one who pointed this out. The the team can't handle that. Somebody needs to sit down, Luca, and go, Luca, stop screwing around before the game. You're fine. You're still going to get your 30-point triple-double. The other guys see it as screw around time one minute before the game starts. I I felt like for the longest time, Kevin, sorry to interrupt you there. When Mike would do that, I was like, that's just just nitpicking. And and I really was like, yeah, like I get it, but... The more you see it, the more you start thinking, especially the more you see their effort whenever they get into these games, that's when you're like, okay, if you can cut that out and get them focused pregame, maybe that carries over where they start taking this more seriously because they're not stepping on the court with a do or die life uh, mentality. Because nobody's going to overrule Luca from that perspective. Yep. Is So I, I guess my question is, and I don't even really feel like it's a question. It's a thing that needs to happen, but how does it happen? You talked about the coach and why the coach is probably safe because of Kyrie and Luca. Well, at least part of that falls on Luca then. Screwing around in the pregame, that falls on Luca. Shouldn't that just inherently be in you to be like, man, what if we quit jacking around before the game? Or what if I think I you have just to be quit? told that. Okay. Well, then the coach. But you have to respect the person who tells you that. I don't know who Luke, I guess he respects Kid, but I think he loves, I don't know if he respects Kid. I know he loves Kid. Because he gives him soft recommendations and lets him do whatever he wants to do. It seems like instead of structure and discipline, it's more about uh, the overall way of basketball. Like that's what I feel like Kid is is discussing with him more than anything. Is I'm not I'm not here to give you structure. I'm not here for it to to go pull the greatest out of you. Let's talk more philosophy on the game and stuff like that, which. Oh, Luca probably man. loves because he understands yeah. the game at a very high level. It's just those other those other minor those other very serious details that go into being great. Is it wrong that I hate that then? Like I absolutely think Jason Kidd's focus should be pull the absolute everything. I don't know if he knows game. how. I don't think Jason Kidd knows how. Like like when you listen to the Giannis stuff, Giannis makes it sound like, yeah, now that I reflect on it. 
he was doing he was telling me those things that are going to make me better but he didn't know how to pull that out of me yeah like a like i guess maybe a pop nose or you know a guy who is a a coach a therapist uh you know, all those things that go into it a disciplinarian just I mean, we talk about bochi you know everybody says the same thing about bochi and the consistency but bochi's put a lot into what he ex what he thinks a coach a manager needs to be and a lot of thought into that i think that jason kidd is a great individual coach as an assistant coach on a team that's what he was with the lakers hey why does lebron love him so much well he doesn't have to dictate who's in the game with lebron he's just working with lebron on what you're talking about Corey. just thinking about the game from his perspective because he was such a great point guard lebron is pretty much a point guard such a great point guard and they can talk about the game Jason Kidd made zero decisions as an L.A. Laker coach. He was right. just helping out as an individual and as an assistant. He wasn't having to make any type of, should we play a center? Shouldn't we play a center? Should we play this guy over that guy in this key situation? And I think it's too much for him to handle. And it's not, doesn't mean he wasn't a genius basketball player. It just means he's not a genius head coach. The defensive rotations okay. are starting to drive me bananas. And can I just point out, the shocking difference between the winning streak versus losing four or five. The amount of points given up? Yes. It is. It's unbelievable. So the Mavericks, they're not a good defensive team. We've talked about it. I think they're probably like seventh or eighth from the bottom in terms of efficiency. But they've been giving up 118 points per game for the season. During their seven-game winning streak, they did not give up more than 113 in any one of those games. All right, what's happened since then? Let's juxtapose it. While they've lost four or five, they've given up at least 120 in every game. So you go from not giving up more than 113 in any game to at least 120 in every game, and you're giving up an average of 127.4. That's going to lose you games yeah all day long. I, I think before the trade deadline, they were giving up, just to give you an idea, 118.5 per yes. game. So they've gotten worse somehow. And I, hey, I know Sweeney's a defensive coordinator. I'll point him out. Like, what is going on? Why, why are you guys getting the least out of these guys? I like this team on a piece of paper. It doesn't matter how much you like them on a piece of paper, but on a piece of paper, it looks like they have a lot of things going their way. So if Luke is playing at a high level, Kyrie's playing at a solid level, your role players are who they are, but I think this is a solid group of role players and they're playing their worst basketball. Maybe this is just a bad stretch everybody goes through, but you got to pull your head out of your rear end at some point because right now you're the eight seed and I know you can still get to six or five. Four is long gone. They'd have to win out almost at this point to get to four. So you look at it and you go, all right, can we still make the real playoffs? Yes, they can still make the real playoffs. But if they don't pull their head out of their butt soon, then they are going to look at playing on the road as an eight seed or maybe getting a home game as a nine seed and then having to win that game to then play the loser of the seven, eight game. And so far, as far as I can remember these last two years, no nine or 10 seed has made it into the real playoffs yet. I, I think the thing that's frustrating for just these last two games, and I realize you still have plenty of season to go, you win these last two games, you'd be tied for fifth as opposed to eighth when you see yeah. it. Because I definitely think fifth is still achievable. I hear what you're saying about fourth because you're six games back and would have to jump over four other With teams. With 21 games yeah, to play. That would be a uh, really difficult task right there. But I, I definitely believe the five seed is still in play. But you could... Go anywhere between 5 and 10 right now. I, yeah. I, I truly believe that. I, I, I'm starting to lose. I'm losing hope on this year being something good. I didn't think after the trade they would make it to the NBA Finals. I thought they had a chance to make it to the Conference Finals. I'm going to back off of that. I hope I'm wrong. And you can say, oh, you're too wishy-washy. Well, I have to watch the games. I don't see so you're watching games and you don't change your mind. Like That's the one thing about people who complain about us at times. Oh, you're changing your mind again. Wait, you're not supposed to watch. When you watch a Cowboy game, you're just supposed to say they're winning the Super Bowl, even if they lose by 100. Well, they lost to Green Bay. Do you still think they're going to win next round? Like, I, <laughs> No, I, I do not. So I have to watch the games, and I was very optimistic up to the All-Star break, and after that Phoenix game is when I thought, oh, my gosh. Like, Phoenix is right around that kind of, can they make it to the Western Conference Finals? Yeah, they could. Will they? I don't know. They're in a big group of people. And I thought, maybe this is going to change. They go to Indiana. I'm like, hey, everybody has a bad game. They go to 
to Cleveland. They, you know, blow a lead, but then have really, you know, unfortunate luck go against yeah. them. They beat Toronto, great. And then you get hammered by Boston. All right, they're better than you, but I did not like the way Jason Kidd handled the the second half and going, let's go with no center. And then he follows it up against Philadelphia and says centers are worthless. If they are worthless, what is Nico doing? Did you guys not have a conversation? Yeah. Like, was it Nico's like, I got you another center. I got you 48 minutes of seven foot athletes. And then Jason Kidd's like, I don't want any minutes of seven foot athletes. I want to play JJ Berea, Spud Webb, and Muggsy Bogues the rest of the game. Like, I love small ball. What in the world is Jason Kidd doing? I just, at this point, I know he's going to be the coach. He's not going to get fired. I, I just don't think he's going to get fired no matter what, unless he does something off the court to get fired. I just want to make sure I understand the logic that y'all have for this. It's because Kyrie adores him and so does Luca. Is as soon that, as, yes. As okay. soon as you fire him, Kyrie wants out. That's a big issue for your organization. And I don't know about Luca and where he would be at if you fired kid. So maybe it is, and I know I'm forwarding ahead. Maybe you blow out all the assistant coaches. But I don't know if that's going to work either in the future because Jason Kidd ultimately has to make the decision. Am I playing Maxi Kleba over Derek Lively and over Daniel Gafford? Am I playing Derek Jones Jr. in these clutch five minutes over whoever he's trying to make a decision on? Is there any chance that Nico, maybe the new ownership group, but I want, I'm going to stay focused on Nico, does not have that exact same opinion that if you swept Jason Kidd out, because we've talked about this before, is... Mark Cuban definitely fell in line with the cult of and he personality. Hired kid before yes, he hired Nico. Yes. And he, he was like, oh, you're a star. You're the guy. And so I don't he think was, he wanted to hire Jason Kidd. I think he got talked into it by Finley and Dirk. And so, but and he maybe was, a few other people. And he was not going to move on. Is it possible that Nico or maybe the new ownership takes a hand in this? Who the hell knows? Is there like, I don't view it that way. I think we can keep these players happy and maybe I, have a better shot at winning. I do think this, if they lose the play-in situation, they're going to be in the play-in. It's almost impossible for them to fall out of that. Like, they'd have to almost yes. lose out to, yes. to fall out of that. If they, let's say, don't make it to the real playoffs, or they make it to the real playoffs and get swept by, let's just say, Minnesota, and it just it's not competitive, I do think Nico would really need to sit down with Kyrie individually and Luka individually and ask them what they like about Kid, what they dislike about Kid, and try to see their their feelings on this before you fire him. Because if Kyrie's like, well, if you fire Kid, who are you going after? And if he likes some of the candidates, like you can't go. Well, we're going to get Steve Nash. He'll say, I quit. You know, like <laughs> so, like bold move. you have to. I think you do have to in today's NBA, especially with Kyrie, and I also think somewhat with Luca. You have to be really concerned about their feelings on the next head coach. And I think that it's just easier to go. They like Jason Kidd. He watches the games. And let's just hope that Luca figures it out on his own. Michael Jordan didn't figure it out on his own. He needed Phil Jackson. He needed the triangle offense. He needed some leadership from the bench. So I guess I guess that they're thinking Luke is going to be better than Michael Jordan and that he'll figure it out on his own without a strong head coach. I do wonder how long before because at the moment it's like look it's the gm's job to do the gm work uh but how long it'll be before the new ownership portion decides they want an roi here and, uh, yeah i don't know and, and whether or not it's like wins are important to them you know i think we'll find out a lot about them as we move along it sounded like whenever they say words which you know whenever people say words a lot of times you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt on them, whether or not they're telling the exact truth and what truth they're telling but it just kind of their decision making from here on is going to be, you know, will let us know how much they want wins, how important further in the playoffs means to them and what else this team can do along the way. So that could be another point. I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen this year where that ownership leans in and says, hey, we we need we need to make sure we do this. You know, I don't think there's going to be any pressure from that this year. Maybe next year, though. I, I will say this and things can change again. The Mavericks need to win their next five games. No question about it. You beat Indiana at home. You have today off. You beat Miami at home. They're not a great team either. They're fine. They're they're an average. They're like, you know, a little above average. They're yeah. going to make the playoffs, but nothing special. At Detroit, they're pathetic. At yep. Chicago, they're pathetic. Home against Golden State. I get it. 
but you better show you're better than the tenth seed, or I guess they're the ninth seed now. And the right? team that just got run off the freaking floor. So, to me, you want to show me that what I'm saying is wrong, and I've jumped ship too soon. Win your next five games. Those are those are all games you'll be favored in. It doesn't mean you'll win them, but you're favored. You you will be favored to win those games as long as you're healthy and you are healthy. I, I don't know. My key would be. Play a center 48 minutes. Remember your whole thing about Gafford and Lively playing yes. together? Hell, he doesn't even want to play them more than 30 minutes total in a game. That is infuriating. He wants to, to play me. small ball. I almost said a bad word. I appreciate that you did not.